And now it's time for our last inspiring keynote. It is about the importance of normalizing cycling and improving cities. Please help me welcome at this, to the stage Will Butler Adams. He's the CEO of the global brand Brompton. He is also in, in private. He's very adventurous which has led him to expeditions down the Amazon and up a 7,000-meter peak. And now he's here, oh, also the, bringing the, the something to, to show. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm very curious what, you, what you're bringing and um, especially what well, it's you're a bicycle to share with us. Do you have one? Am I going to get started? Am yeah. I going to start talking? Okay. So I can. I, I mean... I'm going to just talk to all these enormous crowds of people, oh, yeah. and, then, and then we can touch base at the end, if that's okay. Okay, that's super. Okay, Perfect. We can do that. So, um, I've got 15 minutes with this enormous crowd of people. Yes! <laughs> Yay! They're coming in. They are coming in. I've been fiddling around with this bike. For 21 years. And recently, we just made our millionth bike. So, beginning to learn. And this bike, which is very simple, really, it folds up and it works. It's not a sex symbol. It doesn't make you trendy. It just works. And in the world that we live in, we need things that make life a little bit better that contribute to society and make us happy. And that is what this bike does. It was invented in 1975 by this guy, Andrew. 1975, the bike industry was dead. It was all about recreation. BMXs, road bikes, the mountain bikes were just getting going. But Andrew wasn't interested in recreation. Everyone else wanted to drive a car and be trendy. And he thought, no, I want a bike. I want something that's simple, that's useful, that's efficient to make my life better. And we've spent 47 years developing and evolving that product. And we haven't come out with millions of different variants. We haven't come out with the hard tail, the soft tail, the, the gravel, the big wheel, the fat wheel, the thin wheel, the this trend, the that trend. We've just made it better. But that doesn't mean we don't have ambition. We are ambitious because we need to be ambitious. This guy, in the time that I've been at Brompton, has invented a rocket that goes to space, comes back, does a 180-degree turn, and lands on a pinhead on planet Earth. And we as an industry need to do more. We need to move faster. We need to take more risk. We need to be more ambitious. Because the challenges we face as a planet, universally, are actually aided and solved by this funny little bicycle. And that is what our business is about. Not just Brompton, all these amazing trendy halls with free beer and sexy pictures. That's not what they're about. They're about the bike. The most efficient mode of transport ever invented. And the brand isn't the sexy logo. It's this. It's the bike. We've been making bikes, as I said, for nearly 50 years. And the reason we're here is because the bike actually works. And it doesn't just work when you buy it. It works five years after you've bought it, 10 years after you've bought it. We've got people trading Bromptons that are 35 years old, still going strong. That's what we need on planet Earth. We don't need more crap cluttering up our lives, buying more and more stuff, opening our mouth and ramming down the latest, best, newest, sexiest thing. We just need good quality stuff that's built to last, that is making the world a little bit better. And it is the world. 
Cycling is not, is not limited to a particular community. It's not limited to a particular part of the world. Everywhere in the world, parents are spending hours teaching their children to ride a bike. In China, in Canada, in South America, they're there all running along. And when their child runs and goes off on the bike for the first time, they're yipping with joy. And yet somehow, we as an industry have forgotten about that. We're not talking to the world. We're not talking to universality. We're talking to some tiny little group of very enthusiastic cyclists. And we just want to sell them more stuff. This is what this show is broadly about. Let's sell the cyclists more stuff. In Germany, cyclists 10%. In the UK, cyclists 5%, if you're lucky. In the US, cyclists 2.5%. But look at those people who know how to ride a bike. Because their parents were there showing them. Oh, Germany, people who know how to ride a bike, 95%. UK, a little bit less, 92. So what are we doing talking to the 5% or the 10%? What we need to do as an industry is talk to the 80%, the 85%. People who know how to ride a bike and they're sitting in a car going nowhere or they're shoved under the ground under somebody's armpit or their community says cycling isn't for you. Rubbish. Cycling is for everyone, but we need to make them invited. We need to open up our industry and tell everyone cycling is universal. Everyone's invited. Not here. You walk around here. Men, white, 50. You are invited. But everyone else... Maybe not sure. Can't see myself here. And we need to change how we communicate, how we engage, and how we think about cycling. Because we have a responsibility to do more as an industry. Brompton has a mission. It's been around for a very, very long time, and that's it. We create urban freedom for happier lives. It doesn't say we want to flog millions of Bromptons, make loads of money and buy a yacht and look like an idiot bouncing about in the Mediterranean. It says we want to create urban freedom for happier lives. We've just sold our millionth bike. That's flipping cool. It's taken us 47 years, but we got there bit by bit with solid foundations, caring for our customers, taking risk. And while we do that, we need to care about the environment that we're operating in. It's no good just because we happen to be green because we're all on our bikes that we then don't give a shit about how we make the bike. We can't get away with it. We can't just because we're a bicycle, we can make stuff somewhere in the world where we don't see what's happening. Or we don't care for the people making the product. We need to take responsibility for the entire supply chain and the entire life of that bike. We are leaders and should be leaders in the world for sustainability. No better sector than our own should be leading in sustainability, and we're not. Because we can get away with it, because we look so pretty, because we're bicycle and we're green. We have to do more. Because this is what the world is. This is what we created in the last 50, 60, 70 years. Net migration to cities. That's what we said. Everybody's welcome. Come to the city. It's where you're going to make your money. It's where the land of milk and honey is. Everyone rolls in. They've all gone trotting in from the countryside into the city. And what do they get? Air pollution. What do they get? Lower outcomes for mental and physical health. What do they have to do? Work every hour God sends just to pay for the rent, the cost of food, the frappe latte, three lugs of some sort of caramel schmuck. Who came up with that? That is not what life should be about. We need to rethink how we live in our cities. We need to design cities around the human beings that live in them, not 
around an automobile that is cluttering up our cities, that is using precious resources. If I want to go 70 miles an hour, or in Germany, 100 kilometers an hour, forget that, 140 kilometers an hour down the autobahn, I'm not going to do it on my Brompton. I mean, I'm pretty damn fit. My legs go pretty fast, but forget it. That ain't going to happen. The car is brilliant at doing that. Awesome. But it's the wrong tool where millions of people live. It needs to be kept on the outside, left carefully, and then you change from that tool which goes whizzing along the autobahn onto a tool that's good for the heart, good for the soul, means that the air is clean, it's less likely to mow down a child, and brings health and happiness into our cities. Remember, it's the most efficient mode of transport. And somehow, society has forgotten that. The politicians have forgotten that. And as an industry, we have a responsibility to remind them. Because it matters to all of us, the outcome of how we live in our cities all over the world. But it takes time. And we've got to get away from an industry that's rushing. Way COVID! Fuck COVID! Oh, you know? We've got to look for the long term. We've got to be more, woo! We've got to be more patient. We've got to build our businesses for the future and care about where we are in five years, 10 years, and not rush for money here and gone tomorrow. We've got to professionalize our industry and be well capitalized, do deep R&D, care deeply about our customers and build solid brands. And that comes with risk and innovation. I'm afraid there isn't enough innovation in our sector. I'm giving the sector a hard time. It's only because I care about it so much. I want it to be better. And I'm criticizing myself as much as I'm criticizing everyone else. We are far from perfect and all these things we're trying to do. But we need to innovate in how we engage the customer. That majority of people who know how to ride a bike but aren't riding are intimidated. That's a barrier. We need to break those barriers down. One thing we did was bike hire. You can take a bike for a day, five pounds. And you can take it for a week. You can pick up a bike and take it to Paris. You can take it on holiday. You can take it home for four or five days. But that's five pounds that anyone can afford to try it. Get back on. Have that experience of freedom of riding a bike. We've got to find ways to engage different communities to enable them to try a beautiful bike and, and, and discover or rediscover the joy and freedom of cycling. But it comes with risk. This business has been 13 years. We've never made a profit. Who cares? We are bringing more people to our industry. It's pretty much break even, but it's delivering in, term, in terms of as a catalyst to bringing different communities and different peoples into our industry. Retail. Retail. Our industry is selling to cyclists. Square and center. Shop. Blokey. Techie, cluttered, and just intimidating. I mean, you walk into a shop, hello, um, I'm here for a bike. Oh, right, what sort of bike do you want? Hard tail, soft tail, gravel. I mean, what's the derailleur? I mean, what's the gears? I mean, you know, I mean, what sort of stuff do you want? I mean, you are after the Bosch? Are you after the Shimano? Are you after the thing? Uh, a bike? Uh, no, 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 take me over here. That's not retail. That's intimidating. That's scary. I mean, if you're in that world, that's great. But that's not who we need to speak to. We need to make it inviting, delightful, not intimidating. And we've tried to do that in our stores. And I talked about innovation. We bring, we sell 100,000 bikes to 46 countries around the world through 1,500 retailers. We bring those retailers to our factory. Every year, probably around about 250 people come from all over the world to London, to our factory, to learn about our bike. In one year, out of the 250, six, six women out of 250 people from our industry, from Japan, from America, from Germany, six women 
So let's think about innovation. Let's be really radical. Not about the gear system and the latest carbon knick-knack, dilly-dilly-dilly-do. Let's be really radical and put more women into our stores, on the shop floor. Okay? So then you innovate radically by putting some women onto the shop floor. And you discover that your women can sell to women they feel less intimidated. They understand their needs. And therefore, your sales to women, that's half of the market, remember, go up. And you then discover also that the women can sell to men. And we found that our women are some of our most effective, most impressive retailers on our shop floor. But the industry is still too male orientated. We are making progress. But my God, we've got a long way to go. E-bikes, titanium bikes. I'm down to seven seconds. I'm in the red. This bit. I'm afraid politicians, we can kiss goodbye to politicians. You know, they're all short term. They're all egos. They're here today, gone tomorrow. I've been fiddling around in this industry for 21 years. The politicians that have come and gone in that time, you know, there are a few of them. <clears throat> that doesn't mean we don't need to engage with them. We do. Because that's all we've got. And we need to engage. We need to explain to them. We need to bring them into our factories. We need to show them what we're doing. We need to give them the experience because we need them to come behind us and help us do what we need to do. The bicycle delivers commercial value. It delivers health. It delivers economic value. Happiness saves the NHS. It's a breathtaking value add to society, but most politicians don't understand it. And they need to. Because this is what's coming. It's not a joke. It's real. And we, as a sector, as an industry, have a responsibility to do more to solve this problem. The biggest carbon emissions in the world, in every single country, are in the cities. That is where the consumptions, the emissions are the greatest. And that's where we need to operate. And we need to shift our vision away from the cyclist into those that know how to ride a bike. I'm going to finish with this one little video, which you probably won't be able to hear, and then I'm done. Maybe it won't work. Maybe I press that. Yes. Here we are on the Hudson River. It is completely awesome. There is nobody on this river, apart from Tom and I, in our little boats that we have just pedaled down from his home to the Hudson, and we are going over there to Manhattan. It is nuts. There is a world of frustration, cues, hoots, horns up on that bridge behind me. And we are, I've got my coffee here, and we are just pootling across the Hudson in our little cute boats. And there's Tom, who's the um, orchestrator of this delightful adventure. You can see his little bronze just cruising in, over in his boat. on a beautiful morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Will Butler-Adams, for this really fun and inspiring wake-up call. Thank you.